Okay, back on the solar topic again today, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my two inverters. Bit of a review on uh, on this one, and show you uh, what actual power they're using whilst they're being used. So, this this inverter, if you're looking at them online to purchase, Harman and Haran, are they okay? Are they crap? What are they? Well, I can't really. Um, comment about the actual uh, internal quality of the of the damn thing, the components they've used, or the the engineering of it. But what I can say is I've been running this one now for uh, a good couple of months, pretty hard. Tried tried all sorts of loads on it, and um, I've uh, it, yeah I've found it really good. It's actually been really faultless. So. Um, yeah, so far my run with this particular inverter is good. I'm happy with it. Um, comes with a remote, which I think is really good, particularly when I want to mount everything in a cabinet and just have uh, a couple of very basic control boxes uh, or control panels on the face of the cabinet to operate. So uh, my cabinet will basically have this um, solar charge controller remote mounted on the face as well as this one this inverter also comes with dual fans uh, and they uh, tick in and out quite nicely the uh, the terminals are quite acceptable uh, it comes with the uh, leads um, so yeah they're quite quite chunky um, yeah, quite acceptable. Has a bank of fuses across the back there. Uh, why it's got so many, I've got no idea, but it's got them. So that's all right. So, yeah, that's basically this model. The remote, the only function the remote's got is on or off. But what it does do is, you know, it's displaying battery status yeah uh, low input voltage and obviously on and off the amount of cable you get with it's pretty reasonable in length I think it's around about three meters so that's not too bad so yeah on the face of the inverter let's have a look I'll pull that out yeah you got your two 240 volt outlets on off power and a light that indicates when it's on and I think it blinks when there's a problem so currently my wattage uh, is zero amps is zero so let's see what it pulls what it really does actually pull when we turn it on now you might notice from time to time yeah you know, the screen appearing unusual in this camera um, but I can assure you it's uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty similar to that at all times in real life. So I think when I put it there, it goes blank. It must be just some sort of effect. But right, okay, the inverter's running. Right, it's it's showing us you know a battery symbol here. It's showing what the current voltage is, battery status, uh, and um, the actual output voltage. You know, to operate the remote that actually stays off and the remote will then do the uh, do all the switching so there you go so the remotes you know shows you your battery status I like this it's got a backlight switch so when it's off uh, if you've got a cabinet you know in a, in a in a shed or something or other and it's dark and you walk in there or you got you just find that light press it away you go so that operates it which is quite good 
the inverter is on and what is the inverter actually pulling uh, there you go so the inverter this inverter at idle pulls you know around yeah around 10 watts it's rated at 0.75 amps in current um, so you know hey that's pretty close Now to compare that, so we've got 10 watts basically, to compare that with a 150 watt inverter, uh, we'll pull, turn it off. Now watts go back down to zero. And a little 150 watt inverter. About half. So really, you know, both inverters, you know, they really could be left basically on 24-7 and on a modest uh, system like this, um, solar system, it wouldn't affect it because what's actually happening um, with the solar and, in, and your inverters, as you can see, that one's on, the big one's on, small one's on. being pulled out of the batteries is 15 watts. So what does the charge controller, the MPPT, do to compensate for that? Let's have a look. Okay, so we got our 15 watts being pulled out, but the, but the charging system's putting 19 back in. There you go. And then also as we ramp up the amps, as we ramp up the amps and we turn on a light. Okay. Running one lamp, 240 volt light. 27 watts. The solar has seen that and is compensating and bringing in 32. So on and so on. Now at the moment, uh, I've got everything turned off and the, uh, the charging system is trickling in a bit of power into the panels. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so I'm, I'm basically on float charge uh, at the moment. Now, to just uh, show you how the charge controller uh, senses a additional draw on the battery by turning on the inverter and lights uh, and I think it's good to show you um, how that how the uh, charge controller compensates for that so what I'll do go back to watts so at the moment you know very little wattage is actually uh, being pulled out it's just yeah the battery's just been trickle charged basically so now let's ramp it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, on this switch, I've got six lights, another additional one there, another additional one there. They're all plugged into the 150 watt inverter. At the moment, the inverter's off. At the moment, the PV array is charging the battery as it sees fit. So well, I'll just turn on the inverter and we'll see how the solar compensates. The MPP monitors it pretty quick, picks up that there's current being pulled. Yep, 
you can see it raising up. Oops. All right, we're up to 44 watts. PB array is now putting in 113. There you go, 120 watts. So that's what the MPP system's doing because power's being pulled out. So basically, you can say around, you know, like 100 watts, say, it's coming in. 67's going out. So not only is the solar running, one light, two, three, four, five, six, and the additional one over there. At the moment, bringing in 72 and 67 being pulled out. Now my, because I haven't you know, fastidiously mounted my solar panels on the correct angle to face the sun or anything, they're just sitting flat on the roof of my garage. And not only that, I've got that thumping great big tree outside, which you can see the shadowing on the driveway is now starting to shadow my panels. And that's why my uh, my wattage will be quite erratic from this time of the day onwards. But even even saying that, you can see that I'm clearly putting in more than I'm taking out. And that's what I like about this system. It actually monitors that pretty quick. So if I actually turn off the inverter. Right. Okay, inverter, inverter's off, lights are off. Let's see where that jumps to. And that's jumped down to seven watts, which is basically um, just finishing off the bulk charge, just about ready to go into float charge, particularly when it's only like 0.2 of an amp. The batteries are as full as a gug. So yeah, when it comes to the inverters and the solar, the solar compensates. Um, uh, when it comes to how good is this inverter? Um, yeah, quite good, I'm quite happy with it. Um, what I'll do next is uh, I'm gonna go and grab a, a heater, electric heater. So now uh, we're gonna put this very humble as it stands at the moment, 500 watt solar panel, uh, 150 amp storage system through its paces somewhat. And we're gonna run it through this standard room electric heater. As you can see, we've got 1200 watt or 750 watt. There are options. So what we'll do is we'll power up the inverter. Everything's on, everything's happy. Inverter's pulling out 10 watts. Let's just try straight up the 750 watt function. Okay, so, yeah, uh, it's definitely putting out some heat. That inverter, Pulling out of the batteries to run that. Okay, there's our power, and there's our current. There's 70 amps being currently pulled out. Bird is running very happy, producing that. Yeah, fans aren't even on. So, this humble little system yeah, it's comfortably running that heater. Now if we change it up, let's say we drop out 750 watt 
and we go to 1200 and we run the fan there you go that's running there's the little fan inverter is pulling 105 amps 1265 watts. That's so good pull. Very good pull. And it's quite quite happy to do this. Fans aren't running. Systems all full normal. So there you go, if you've got concerns whether you know, this inverter is capable of, uh, of running you know, at least a thousand watts plus, um, absolutely no problems. And again I like this remote switch, this is really good, there you go. So you know, will it take a thousand watts plus? Yep, that was 1200 watts. Uh, didn't even ruffle its feathers. Pulling a hundred amps out of the system. Um, so yeah, it's a good inverter. It does the job. It, you know, it does exactly what it's rated for. Um, on a day like today, again, using it to power my fridge um, the inverter only pulls, you know, around 170 watts to do that. So this 1500 watt continuous inverter only only working uh, working hard as far as 150 watts being produced. Um, it'll it'll do that, I think, for for quite some time. So there you have it. What what two different inverters size inverters will pull? terms of wattage and amps and uh, a little bit on how the solar reacts to uh, things when they're being turned on.